Okay, for merit good market failure and for public good market failure, there could be an argument for state provision, where the government just comes in and provides all the resources in that market, also known as direct provision. The reason the state would decide to do this is simply because they think the free market just will never do a good job, even if they were subsidised heavily. So the state comes in and just does it all itself. Right? So, for public goods it's a good thing because there is a missing market. Without state provision there would be no public goods. For merit goods it could be argued that these goods are so socially desirable, education and healthcare for example, that it makes rational sense for the state to provide them. So how does it work? Well, we can actually show how state provision works by using a diagram. So, the government provides all the resources in these markets, a fixed amount of resources, which is why supply is vertical. And that leads to Q1 level of resources actually being allocated. Demand is just normal. Okay, so normal demand curve downward sloping. Right, you can see straight away, we're going to have a problem here. Think about merit goods, think about public goods. Do we pay for them when we consume them? When we consume them? No, we do not. At the point of consumption, they are provided free of charge. Okay? Healthcare, when we go to hospital. Um, education, when we go to state schools. Um, public goods, like road signs, roads, street lighting. These are all free at the point of consumption. Yes, we pay for them through taxpayers, you know, when we pay taxes, taxpayers' revenue pays for these things, but at the point of consumption, the price is zero. So you can see what the problem is here. At a price of zero, there's our demand, but there's our supply at Q1. We have an excess demand for this good or service because the state's providing it at a price of zero. I'll come on to this as a problem in a second. Okay, but very basically, this is how state provision works. The, the state just provides all the resources and goes from there. Why is it good? Well, you would hope that resource allocation improves. Alright, so you would hope that Q1 would be Q star. So for merit goods, we know there's an underproduction, hopefully now that's solved. For public goods, there is a missing market, so at least now there are resources, in which case, great. Um, so resource allocation should improve, taking us hopefully at this social optimum, or at least towards it. Why else is it good? There is no price exclusion here at all. Okay, so free, these goods and services are free at the point of consumption. So if they're socially desirable, if they're necessary for the function of society and is necessary for all individuals, you could say like a good education is, like good healthcare is. Well then providing it free means no one can be excluded consuming them, which is a good thing. So in that sense, excellent. And thirdly, um, all social benefits are likely to be considered. Okay, the government, unlike the free market, tries to consider what society desires. So in that sense, all external benefits, all social benefits are likely to be considered when the government provides resources, whereas the free market, private agents will just ignore them. So in that sense, that's good too. Why is state provision potentially a bad thing? Well, again, huge opportunity cost. Take the healthcare in the UK, for example. The NHS costs billions and billions of pounds to run every single year. Well, could that money have best been used elsewhere? Could that, well, has that money been taken away from, let's say, police services, from defence, from education? You know, there's a big opportunity cost in pouring all this money into healthcare. All right, so opportunity cost argument. Um, you can also say that state-run organisations tend to be wasteful. There is no profit motive. If the state's providing all these resources and sending up organisations, these organisations are not doing or not running themselves for profit. Therefore, a lot of waste could creep in, and that's not a good thing. Okay? Waste inefficiency is bad, and state-run organisations tend to be very wasteful. Another bad thing is that, well, it ignores the private sector completely, just state provision. Okay? The private sector could actually be very useful okay? in bringing down costs, in providing great quality, okay? maybe making technological improvements and things, innovating. The private sector can actually be very useful, and by state provision, direct provision, 
it ignores the private sector completely. Okay? Now, what does the effect of state provision depend on? So the effect in solving market failures. What does the state provision, the effect of it, solving American market failure depend on? Well, one, how can we ration this excess demand? We've just left it there for now. Let's come back to it. We have a big excess demand here. We've got loads of people that want it. But because resources are limited, the government hasn't provided enough resources. How do we ration the excess demand? Well, that's a very normative judgment. Right? If you look at schooling in the UK, you've got a limited amount of primary school places at the moment, given them, given them the demand that's out there. Because it's free at the point of consumption, you've got all these people wanting primary school places, but there aren't enough spaces out there. But the NHS, you've got all these people going to hospitals, going to GP surgeries, wanting treatment, but actually there aren't enough doctors, there aren't enough resources, there aren't enough hospitals out there to supply the demand. So how do you ration this excess demand? You've not got a price of it for you. You now need to consider normative judgments. Is it, for, for the NHS, is it done via waiting list like we see in this country? Is it done via just, you know, luck of the draw? Who comes first out of the hat? Is it done via severity of condition? Who knows how to do it? But you need to work out a way to ration the excess demand. Okay, so maybe in that sense, bring in the private sector. If you bring in the private sector, people that are willing to pay for this service will be able to pay. And maybe that will reduce this excess demand issue as some consumers go to the private sector to consume. So in that sense, how to ration the excess demand? Difficult. If it's not done properly, the effect of state provision can be very, very limited. Okay. At the same time, the effect depends on the level of quantity, the level of resources provided. Okay. What's the information that's available to the government? Does the government know what the socially optimum level of production is? If it does, then hopefully it can provide it. But if not, then you know, maybe it's not going to actually get to the social output level. At the same time, we've got to consider costs and benefits here as well. The costs are so, so high for the government to do this. Really, really high. And are the benefits actually greater than these costs? They better be. If not, we've got potential government failure here. All right? And at the same time, if you're ploughing in so much money into these things and still not supplying enough uh, resources to match the demand, well, are you even doing a good enough job? Is it worth just letting the private sector do it and save yourself all of these costs? This all needs to be considered at this stage. Okay? And it also depends on whether you can actually bring in a role for the private sector. Should the state provide all healthcare services? Maybe there are some health services that should be provided by the private sector that aren't considered merit goods. Cosmetic surgery might be one. Dental implants might be one. There are areas of both education and of healthcare where you might say that some services are actually not merry goods, in which case the private sector should be left to deal with those and to supply resources there. So in that sense, you know, can you actually still bring in a role for the private sector? Something else to consider too. Anyway, that's state provision, a very interesting case um, worth considering economics. Okay, that's the end of that. See you next time. Thank you very much.